Well, guys, I'm back. Thought I'd show you where I'm at on this. Um, we've got her stripped down, uh, partially for cleaning purposes. I want to get it all cleaned up. The other thing was, is there was uh, underneath the main wiring bundle, uh, there was rubber coated wiring that was deteriorated. Um, one here ran down underneath here um, two of them they have B plus on them and so I removed the main bundle which uh, see, set in like this because it fit down tight enough that trying to get those wires out was going to be rather difficult The preliminary test, all these resistors are well within spec. Uh, there's only like one of them that is just a tad bit high, but it's still within 20% tolerance. Um, there is a resistor that went across here, it's a divider, power resistor. Uh, dissipates about one watt. This one here was the only one that was giving me a little troubles and that's only because um, they crimp these down, these rivets, to make contact with the wire and those needed to be, they were loose, they needed to be tightened up and right now I've got it going, it, it's measuring what it's supposed to after um, basically taking vice grips and gently clamping them down. Uh, the interesting thing is, this is not evidently regular Nikon wire because at some point when this connection was soldered on, probably at the factory even, uh, there was some solder dropped right here that is making contact. So it did solder and it's on there good. So if the worst case scenario, if they start giving me a little troubles, <coughs> I, should, I may be able to actually solder these but otherwise they measure fine now that they're making contact. The uh, potentiometers are in good shape, measure good, uh, just need a little cleaning. The, this is the volume control, wire wound. Uh, the biggest thing I always remember about these on these radios is this is hot. It's directly connected here so the whole body actually to a certain extent but this is definitely hot. Uh, the shaft is. That's why we they've got it all in insulation and they've got same way with the tone control insulated sleeve and uh, insulator in there to insulate it. Uh, these cans opened up and pulled out. There's the uh, other side of them that fit in here. It's like so, so I'll rebuild those and uh, a couple different types. Uh, power transformer. She's a beast. Nice, healthy, and test perfect. These, uh, that winding right there, and let's see, these two guys here are your filaments for all the tubes, or at least the main majority of the tubes. There's two filaments because uh, everything is running on two and a half volts except for the rectifier, which is five volts. So, They all test good. The choke tests good. It's in good shape. The few things that don't. Now this guy's good. There's three capa capacitors here. Um, this one was 
ever so slightly leaky at its maximum voltage of 200 volts. Uh, so I haven't decided whether where it's located in the circuit. I got to make a decision whether I want to go ahead and keep it in there, um, or you can actually take this off and take off this sleeve, and the rest of it's just a wax potting. So I might uh, dismantle it and take the uh, unwind it and get the two ends off, and just put it back together with a new cap inside and either use the old wax or or a hot glue and paint it or something but repot it. Uh, there were three different caps of this style. Uh, two of them already basically took the sleeves off and the outer wrapping so they will fit, uh, the newer caps will fit inside without any problems. Uh, except for these four sockets, these two and these, which is, this is the rectifier, these are the 45 push-pull output tubes and the pre-amp or first audio. Everything else was bolted in. Um, the 27's were all bolted in. One reason they're out is I wanted to get, for one thing, to get the uh, shields off. And these bolts go right through the sockets. They bolt down right, right directly through the sockets. So when you take these loose, the sockets are loose. Uh, these even got some writing on it, but you probably can't read it. I don't know, but it's uh, EB Manufacturing Company Incorporated patent, uh, seven July twenty second of nineteen thirty. Now I did find out the age from this. This is the main filter cap. Now. There's four big caps in it, or were in it. I unpotted it. A lot of times, these style caps are generally in pretty good shape, except this was not potted, even though it's got a black goo in it. Uh, whatever it is, it doesn't have a smell to it, and it melts at extraordinarily low temperature. And it's soft even at room temperature. But um, they did test bad. I did pull it apart. Uh, before I unpotted them, uh, the wires going into them was, you know, just rubber wires that were all leaking. So I had to do some attention to it anyway, because uh, otherwise, even though these got some sort of uh, grommet there to protect from shorting, it doesn't help matters that, you know on the outside. So there was going to have to be at the very least rewired. Uh, so I'll just, um, you know, put new caps in it. But that had a little paper tag on it. it. was just about ready to fall off. And Kellogg Switchboard and Supply Company, Chicago, USA, capacitor, code number 0 or OS644-1, total capacity of 6 microfarads, date September 12, 1930. So that pretty well dates the radio. Now, number one thing that's wrong, and I don't think it died on its own. I think someone had been, there had been someone in here messing with the radio at, at some point. And in doing so, they uh, did a little changing in the wiring either trying to get it to work and I think they burned out the interstage audio transformer, at least the primary side. And the reason I say that is uh, it's supposed to be wired to these two but this wire is extremely loose and wasn't well soldered at all and yet there's a little spot of that same type wire right here which shouldn't be here. What that does is take out a load resistor 
that would reduce plate voltage and also current that goes through this and onto the plate of the tube and I think what it ended up doing was it ended up taking out the primary when they did that. Not a big deal. Uh, I can use a resistor capacitor coupling for the primary and tie it right into the secondary. The secondary is good for the push pull and the push pull sh will still work. So that's minor. The biggest trick on that is I like to hide the parts so I'll have to find a way of hiding them. The biggest thing is, is uh, two of the RF coils the primaries were open on. And the biggest trick of them is not just a simple rewiring, having to rewind them, but is how they're mounted. They're mounted down deep inside here onto this arm which comes up and acts also as uh, a tie point for the secondary. So you have to unsolder this remove that wire, bring it out through the rivet and get it out of the way and then uh, drill or cut off the rivet, grind it off I just chose just to grind it pull this out after you un of course after you untach its wires take it out and then once you get it out then unrivet it from this, it's a lot easier to wind a new one on the bobbin if it's not attached onto here anyway. So unrivet it and what you end up once I got it unwound um, this is the little bobbin that it fits on and it turned out to be 644 turns of wire that was broke on that one uh, eight different places as I unwound it. So it all fits on there and then these are the tie wires uh, a couple of the breaks I was able to actually see the ends real good and they were green uh, but they did look a little burnt it melted back a little bit and that was out of this one here so I've got two of these I'm going to have to wind I go order some wire it's number 40 gauge and get it and uh, wind those two bobbins uh, let's see, oh, something that I showed the wife and I thought I would show you. Oh, one last little thing. This resistor is good. This is the only replacement because I don't think um, that was actually factory. I think that's been a replacement cap, although it's very period. I mean, this, this style would have been early 30s, so it was done. Uh, quite a long time ago so um, I don't see a problem leaving it in there I mean there's nothing else I can do anyway and it tests good so but uh, a little thing I want to kind of show you guys and I showed the wife just as a little trivial thing here's the tuning condenser uh, it's actually pretty clean I've got to replace of course obviously the grid cap leads <laughs> they're kind of like bad uh, otherwise it's just dusty uh, needs a little lube the bearings are dry uh, so it's a little stiff uh, need to do more more cleaning inside here you can see the some of the dust down in there still but it's real you know it, it brushes right off real easy uh, it's not caked on by any means but 84 years old versus about probably 10 15 years old. AM modern day tuning condenser here and the one from 1930 as a little size comparison. So I, I just thought that was kind of a fun comparison. So anyway, uh, the power switch. I had to do a little uh, spraying some contact down into the top here. It went down on in. It wasn't making contact perfectly all the time, and even when it did, it had, you know, like 20, 30, 40 ohms on it. Uh, after spraying some uh, uh, contact cleaner down in there and then working it several times, 
uh, that is working fine now. The uh, reason it looks so weird on the end here is it actually is hooked right here and then when you turn the uh, volume control it interacts. When I put it back together I'll show it to you before I put it in the radio. Interacts with the switch. So, so the rest of it just uh, more or less cleaning and some polishing on the top surface and uh, no signs of rust anywhere. It just dusty and dirty and uh, some spots kind of a little hard on there so it takes a little scrubbing but uh, it's coming off nicely. Uh, everything's coming together. Uh, the biggest thing will be just uh, winding those two coils and when this is mounted back in uh, figuring out where to hide. I may have room right underneath here to hide at least the resistor and possibly the capacitor. Um, so that's where I'm at on it. I thought I'd just make this update video let you know where I'm at and as I move along once I kind of get her cleaned up and polished up and everything I'll show you make another video of it and of course we'll deal with the a video on these um, winding these coils and of course I'll make a video on this when I get this hooked up and how I did it so that's where I'm at and uh, so I think uh, until the next video um, I'll say goodbye for now and uh, yeah, thanks for watching and thanks to my new subscribers and, uh, and your comments and stuff. So, see you on the next video.